I have a husband. I like him, but I don't like him that much. I mean, he's a great guy and everything like that, but it's just that, uh, eh, you know, eh. What's up, Seekers, and welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. Today, we speak to a 55-year-old woman named Mary Lee who is unhappy with her third marriage and was contacted by a man named Benedict. The two have built a bond through phone calls and text messages through WhatsApp. Mary Lee has grown tired of Benedict's promises that he will come see her in person, and she needs the truth before leaving her husband. Hey guys, before we start this video, we have a quick message for you. We spend a lot of time on these videos and we try to keep them as raw and organic as possible for you guys and try not to cut out anything, small details or big details in the videos. Uh, we try to give you what the facts are. And this one took a different turn. And we want to say that this doesn't, this doesn't represent us as a company. This represents what we do and what we do to educate people because real married people, you know, fall for these traps, you know, whether they're in a good or bad marriage, you know, they venture out and they get caught up in these romance scams that destroy their marriages. And, you know, initially when we started working with Myra, we thought that was the case. We, we don't condone a lot of things that, you know, Myra said or the demeanor that she had toward her husband. Uh, what we are trying to do here is educate people this stuff really happens and what the risks are and what our tools and services can be used for. And we decided to leave this video in because this stuff happens to real people and we get thousands of people every single week that thank us for these videos that we have that learn about the scams they're in, that fix their marriages, that fix their lives that you know save their family members from these scams and that's what we want to focus on and that's why we decided to leave this video in here we definitely don't condone the things that myra had said you know also please be cautious with the comments that you make um, and try not to be poisonous you know we don't want to create a culture that is poisonous toward the people because it actually takes a lot of guts for these people to be in these videos yeah. to do this and you know we want to continue to educate people so thank you guys so much you guys mean the world to us we want to continue turning out real organic content for you guys and uh, thank you again appreciate it guys we are right around the corner from a hundred thousand subscribers help us by clicking subscribe now don't forget your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed hey everyone my name's mary lee i am a dental assistant for the last 28 years I love dentistry. I have a 34 year old son. I have two Jack Russell Terriers and I like to drink beer and talk shit. I have a husband. I like him, but I don't like him that much. I mean, he's a great guy and everything like that, but it's just that, uh, eh, you know, eh, the fire's gone or whatever you want to call it, the passion. It's just like, eh, he's a roommate. I knew him for years. I really liked him, always liked him. Nice guy, great everything, this and that. So I dated him for seven years before he decided, hey, uh, well, let's get married because he promised me safety, security, financial security, and not having to want for anything. He has my back. He cares a lot about me, and I seem to come first in his life. That was a good deal for me. I'm thinking, hey, this is a win-win. I don't have to worry about money. I can get whatever I want. Yeah, I could do this. Well, four years later, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> Until I met this person online. Benedict was Mary Lee's type. He was a stockbroker out of Chicago, handsome, and was established. I was watching TV one day, and there was nothing on, so I got board and got on my phone went on Facebook to see if there was any new posts from my friends and all that and I get this friend request you know I look at I look at it and then I open it up and ooh Rico Suave uh his hair is uh it's black like salt and pepper like uh he's got a beard he's gorgeous it's nice looking that's all I have to say about that but he's good looking you know, cute too. You just want to just pinch those cheeks. Yeah, well, what the hell, you know? <laughs> so I hit confirm. Well, later on, he contacts me 
and says, thank you for accepting my friend request. And how are you? And he told me his name was Benedict and he's a Chicago stock manager. So anyway, we just, just talk and talk and talk and talking about things. And next, you know, first thing he comes out and says, Hey, I got something to tell you. And I went, Oh yeah. What is it? I love you. He goes, you're beautiful. I went, well, gee, thank you. But I don't love you. And you don't even know me, dude. He did call me one time and his accent sounded like Antonio Banderas, you know? And I was like, woo, hey. <laughs> but he just, he's, he's a good looking guy. And this is what started everything. Benedict was a breath of fresh air for Mary Lee. They would talk all through the day and night. I do like talking to him a lot. I mean, you know, he likes how straightforward I am and this and that, and I don't beat around the bush. I mean, I'm just like to the jugular, but I just like talking to him, you know, and he makes me laugh. I make him laugh, and but that Rico Suave voice, man, woof, tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> like if I'm frustrated at work, I'll get on the phone I'm like, God damn, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, and he goes, well, he goes, well, I don't like that you're sweating a dove, you know. And he goes, you, you should, you're a queen, you know. I'm, I'm his princess. I'm just like, yeah, okay, whatever. But thanks. Uh, the nickname I have for him is Benny Wafer because it's a thin, sweet cookie. Um. He just calls me his queen or, you know, his princess. He claims, oh, he was going to go buy us a lake house. And he wanted to know what my ring size was. And I'm like, why? He goes, well, I want to buy an engagement ring for you. I'm just like, dude, I'm not even divorced yet. You know, there's just something there that I just, it's like an addiction. I just can't get enough of talking to him. Another thing that I don't understand is why would a good looking guy like that, who could have his pick, any lady in Chicago, want something to do with some small town hit girl like me? It's just kind of just like, I don't know, just wrecked my brain. You know, I'm, I'm kind of drawn to him, which I know I shouldn't, but I can't help myself. But I'm just thinking, well, if he's real, then I would like to know more. Benedict and Mary Lee's bond over the internet started to grow by the day. They had been in contact for over a year now, and this whole time she was hiding everything from her husband. I have told my coworkers only. Um, my family doesn't know. My husband doesn't know. My coworkers do. Um... One co coworker, you know, says he's not real. He's not real. He's, you know, he's a scammer, you know. And then he hits me up because I was wondering if you could do something for me. I'm like, like what? He goes, well, do you think you can like get me a gift card? I go, a gift card? I go, what the hell you want with that? I said, you don't ask me for money. I go, only people I give money to is my son. Well, it just keeps going on and on and on and on. And so one day I said, hey, if I give you a $50 gift card, will you just back off of me? Because I said, I about had enough of this, you know, bullshit, you know. <laughs> the one day my husband decided he's going to kick me out. I said, what? Because he found the conversation with this guy. So I pack up my things and I go stay with my sister for a while. And I asked that guy, I said, hey, I got kicked out. I go, maybe I should come see you in Chicago. He goes, well, I'm not in Chicago right now. I'm in Seattle. I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> so I stayed with my sister for like three months until my husband kept calling and telling me he was sorry. I need you back here. He goes, I miss you. And I, we could work this out and all that stuff. And so. After I got back home, you know, I didn't talk to that guy for a long, long time. And then he starts back up again. 
he sent me a five thousand uh, dollar money order check. I never cashed it. I just I just told him, hey, look, I got this. Um, this is fake as hell. I'm not doing it. You know, I said I'm not going to jail. But then, a few days after I got that, he sends me flowers here at my office. That's great and all, but no more gift cards. I said, I'm not doing it. I sent him one last month. I don't know why I did that. I don't know. Maybe I was just feeling generous. Uh, I sent him one for $100. I wanted to believe him, you know, hoping he was real, but... <laughs> Benedict's request for money never stopped. As a matter of fact, that's the only thing he wanted to talk about. He sent her flowers and a check for $5,000 and said he needed her to cash it. This is when Mary Lee became suspicious, but she still wanted to believe he was real. She needed to make a choice and her husband was threatening to kick her out of the house. Well, my husband is retired now. Um, yes, he does take care of all the bills. He pays for everything. I pay for my vehicle and my bills. That's that's our relationship. That's how we, uh, you know, manage our finances. He's at the point now where he doesn't care. I can leave anytime I want. Um, but if this guy turns out to be real and all that stuff, I can't come back this time because he said he's he's done. If something, if like him and I should just divorce, he's done. Well, I mean, it's not saying I can't support myself. I can. I would just have to work like five days a week instead of the usual three here. Because, you know, most of the time I'm asleep, so I'm just sitting there. <laughs> but he's, he's okay, but he's not okay with it. Just, I can leave anytime I want. That's about it. I know he loves me and I don't feel that way about him and he knows it. I don't like the way he looks. He just, he looks like an old mountain goat. I'm thinking, God, cut your hair, trim your beard, something. I don't know. I just want to be happy. And it's hard to be happy with my husband just sitting there like some beached whale with a bunch of hair and not doing a goddamn thing. You know, I'm just like, do something, you know, and... I don't know. I'm just not happy. I'm just not a happy person. I had a young son when I was in, you know, my mid twenties, early thirties, and these guys were selfish. They were like, "Well, I don't want to date a woman with a kid. I want my own family, not an instant family." I'm just like, "Bye, Felicia." If this guy is serious, you know, about me, about all these plans and other stuff, well, then what's the hold up? Chop, chop. Let's get to it. You know, quit giving me bulls bullshit excuses, you know, because tick tock, you know, time is not my friend. I'm getting older, you know, and I'm losing interest in a lot of things. I just, yeah, sure. It means right now it means everything to me. I just, I just don't like all this gift card asking and I don't like it. And I told him that. But it keeps on and keeps on with it. And I actually like the son of a bitch, but it's just that, just think he's he's not a real person or he's, he's, he's not who he says he is, even though he does. And, you know, I tried and tried and tried to find out things about him and he doesn't pop up. Okay, so after we gathered all of the information Mary Lee had on Benedict, things took a big turn. This video is a lot different from our other videos. We sent a FU gift cards link out to Benedict so we could track his location. Once he clicked on it, he panicked and started to catch on to what was going on. Benedict's IP address and location came back to someone living in Lagos, Nigeria. The next day, he revealed his true identity to Mary Lee. He apologized to her and told her that he was in fact in Lagos, Nigeria, and he's still madly in love with her. Mary Lee continued to speak to Benedict and they still chat to this day. Next, we looked into this $10,000 check that had the name Kevin on it, but we noticed that the check was packaged and sent by a man named Albert. Who are these guys and why are they connected to this young man in Lagos? 
we ran a search on the address on the package and got Albert's phone number and gave him a call. Before we go further, here's a quick message from our sponsors. Most of the tools that we use on our videos are on our website, socialcatfish.com. You can support our team by picking up a membership for yourself. Date safe online and go to socialcatfish.com. You'll be able to weave out who's a scammer and protect yourself from fake profiles. By the way, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You won't miss any of the new episodes we release. Let's get back to the story. Now, Mary Lee was still dealing with issues with her husband. We had to sit down with her to see what the future holds for her marriage and why she is still in contact with Benedict. It took a lot of work to get her on a call. Mary Lee was even hiding the fact that she was in contact with us. She had to tell her husband that she was going to grab beers from the store in order to talk to us. You know, I didn't expect my husband to be home today and if I would have put on all my war paint, well, where are you going? So, sorry, I look like a ghost. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. So, it seemed like it took a, a lot to get you on the call today. Is it because of your relationship with Ben? <sighs> yeah, because um, when I started talking to him, you know, just everything, my husband would say, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? And I would say, no, I'm just a friend, you know, and... <sighs> You know, this is before I got wise, realizing that, you know, he, you know, wasn't saying who he was. And, but, it, I, you know, I've had other uh, male friends I would be talking to on Facebook that were really real people, real legit, you know. Uh, but, I don't know, I always have to hide my phone and whatever, and it, it just, it's uncomfortable for me, because... Hillary, last time he snatched the phone out of my hand and he broke my phone. And it's, I've been trying to get out of my marriage for a long time, but divorces cost a lot of money. And I only work three days a week. Why not just be transparent with your husband about everything? I just can't. I, I really, I just can't because, you know, I, I don't need to be kicked out again and have nowhere to live but my forerunner. That's not happening. Um, the only place I could ever go, I would have to go to Columbia, South Carolina and live with my cousin, which I really don't want to. I'm trying to fix things with my husband for a better marriage. You know, maybe get along, but I just don't have those feelings for him, but I'm kind of content with it. Is there a reason why there's some hesitation to be open with him? Um, I think three to four years ago, you know, I had an affair with um, with a person we both know. And I've always gotten along with this guy and everything like that. But, you know, he found out. And so, yeah, I was a little uncomfortable and stuff like that. So I tried to work out things with my husband. and. Me and that other guy, well, we never talked again. So I pretty much told my husband that, oh, well, I, you know, I won't stray again. Actually, I haven't at all, really, because I'm not out there dating or doing anything wrong that I thought was wrong. But, but even talking to somebody online, I guess you can call that some form of cheating, but... I wasn't acting on it. He doesn't trust me as far as he can throw me. You know, I gotta come home right after work. I can't make any stops or go anywhere to get stuff. I have to, he has to be with me. You know, I, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Don't you think that he's like this for a reason? You know, uh, you know, I had an affair and I could see why, you know, You know, years ago, I really did care for him, and you know, and I loved him and everything like that. But then once we got married, it's just all of a sudden, bam, handcuffs going on. You know, it's like I'm some type of trophy, and I'm just like, I can't get out. <laughs> so I just kind of wanted to touch on some of the research briefly. Now, the package, you sent us an image of this package. Um, I believe you labeled it as a fake address. That came from Little Rock, Arkansas. 
I have absolutely no idea who that is. Never met him, never heard of him. I did some looking into it, you know, like Street View or Google Earth. And I looked, I went, God, that house is a piece of shit. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't even know who that is. So we actually used property record verification and we found that that's actually a valid address um, and it is indeed owned by a person named Albert. Um, something else I'd like to share with you is that after we found this information out, Drew actually reached out to Albert. Yeah, so I was able to get Albert's phone number from Brianne and Virginia and I just decided to call him. So Albert answered the phone and he seemed like he knew exactly what I was talking about with this package. He asked me about the address. I told him that it was from his address and he said that he deals with this a lot. Now, he was a little suspicious because I did call him back the next day and he had a completely different accent. When it comes to romance scams, nine times out of 10, there's a money mule involved. There are willing money mules and also unknowing money mules. Scammers will use third parties to wash the cash before they receive it. We also thought it was strange that the actual check that you had received from the package was being sent to you with a completely different name. So the name on the package was completely different than the person on the check. Yeah, that's why I called Wells Fargo. So I like I knew it. I just said I just got to verify it. So that never happened. So I I'm glad I, you know, used my spidey senses on that one. <laughs> this is a normal tactic scammers use when they send a check. When you receive it, they will ask you to go to the ATM to cash the check, then pressure you to go to the bank teller and pull the funds out. After you've sent the cash to the scammer, your bank will contact you telling you the check was fake, leaving your bank account negative. Ben revealed himself. How are your feelings towards new Ben? Uh, I would say apprehensive not trusting you know now that i know he's a kid i'm just like nah i mean i'm not devastated and or anything like that i i just knew something wasn't quite right so that's why i wanted to i gotta find this out because there's just no way because like i said nobody's did in chicago nobody but you know so I just had to find out for myself. To me, he's a kid. He might have mommy issues, but <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I still kind of like, like him as a person, but he's looking for a sugar mama and I'm not it. It's not happening. So he needs to uh, either be taken, take, you know, take down a notch or something, but I'm done with it, yeah. Do you feel like he's just as attractive as the other Ben? Well, they're still the same person, but there's two two identities. I mean, it's, it's still the same Ben. It's just that now that I know, I, I can't do it. Uh, I just, I don't wanna have anything more to do with him. I just wanna push him push them away and say, you know, it's time to move on. You're 22. You got your whole life. I got, got maybe 30 more years before I, you know, kick the bucket, I guess. <laughs> Do you think that you'll ever block Ben? Yeah, I think I will. Everything that he's told you is a lie. There's no reason to, to keep talking to him or to believe anything at all he says. Yeah, like he gives a shit how I feel. I didn't, I just went, yeah, you know what, buddy? Am I feeling so hot today? You know, so I'm gonna distance myself just just for a day. Yeah, I know I know that, but I just need to work on me. I need to work on kind of getting out of this marriage due to unhappiness. That's what I need to focus on. So I'm just ready to move on, ready to block him. Uh, you know, block him from email all the way around, so I could just focus on me. So that's yeah. my goal. But my husband keeps texting me saying, what the hell was taking so long? So, yeah, we got to wrap this up before he gets in his damn truck and comes down the road and 
busses me. I don't, I can't deal with that right now. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. Thank Look you, Mary Lee. Yeah, no problem. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, bye. Okay, <laughs> bye. Bye-bye. Unfortunately, we weren't able to speak to Mary Lee's husband to get his side of the story. She didn't want him to get involved. She continues to work at her dental office and has taken a break from online dating. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Remember, all of our new videos go out every Wednesday. So please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, Seekers, we'll see you guys next time.